Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. So gather outside the church. When you are going to survive, God has to step in your step my eyes into the hills from which come my help. I believe, brothers and sisters, that with this text today, we see God inviting you back. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us without fault before his throne. Amen, amen. Stand to your feet. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, put your hands together and let's praise him and lift him up. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise. So let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Lift that high this morning. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Yeah, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. of our King. Let it rise. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. Let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, come on, rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the song of us. Rise among us, let the joy of the King rise among us, let it rise. Hey, hey, we sing, oh, 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 let it rise. We sing, oh, oh, let it rise. Let the praises of the Lord rise. Let the praises of the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let it rise. Hey, let the praises of the Lord rise. Let the praises of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Let the joy of the Lord 
joy. Let the praises of our Lord rise among us. Let it rise. Let's take it out. Let the joy, let the joy of the King rise. Let the joy. Let the praises of our God. Let it rise, yeah. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise, yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, give it, yeah, let it rise, yeah, yeah, let it rise, yeah, yeah, let it rise up in here. Let the glory of the Lord, let the joy of the King, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. This is it. Oh. Come this morning to lift praises to you. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your presence fill this place, dear God. And as our worship goes forth, dear Father, may it be a sweet smell to your nostril. Because, God, we love you more than anything. And so we stand now lifting up holy hands to you, honoring you for who you are. my hand in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. And in thoughts of you, my cloudy days are gone. I will sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Is that your prayer this morning? Lifting holy hands in this place. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy day. I will sing to you this song. I will just say that I love you more than anything. Yeah, all over the building. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than oh, I love, I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I sing, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than you. Oh, oh, I love you, 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 Jesus. I worship and I love 
love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I can't make it without you. I make it without. I love you, Jesus. I need you right now in this place. I can't make it without you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Well, now, if you have your Bible, and we encourage you to bring your Bibles, just so you can keep me accountable. So if I say something that's not in the Bible, you can raise your hand and say, it's not in there. I believe it's important that you know the Word of God, you obey the Word of God, you follow the Word of God. So there's a friend of mine about a few weeks ago made some ribs, which I love ribs. I get real selfish when it comes to ribs. And I, by the way, I was eating on the rib, and it was so good. I didn't want to leave any meat on the bone. You ever been there? Where the meat was that good that you, didn't, you wanted to... Make sure that, there, that you had eaten all the meat on the bone. Yeah. Well, I, I'm coming back from the same passage of scripture I preached two weeks ago. Okay. Because there was still some meat on the bone. Right. So if you go to the book of Genesis chapter 22. Last time I read just about the entire chapter. This time I won't. I'm going to start with verse number 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld from, not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And God called his name the place, Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. You may be seated. I want to speak on this subject. Thank God for the lamb. Thank God for the lamb. Let me hear you say, thank God, thank God. For, the lamb. for the lamb. 
Now, there are many things, if you have time to reflect, there are many things and many reasons you ought to be able to give God some thanks. A- amen? amen? Now, if you were able to walk in here this morning, you can give him thanks for you being able to walk in here. If you're able to see where you're walking, that's the reason to give him thanks. If you were able to get here by driving, or taxi, or Uber, you ought to give him some thanks. If you were able to, if you were able to dress yourself this morning, and you were clothed in your right mind, that's reasons to give him some thanks. If you were able to go and, and, and uh, eat breakfast this morning, because there was food in the cabinet or in the, in the refrigerator, that's reason to give him thanks. In other words, you have a whole lot of reasons why you're here this morning. But the reason why you ought to be here is because you want to give him some thanks. One songwriter said, God is good. Am I right? He's a good God. He's been good to you. You've heard people say it, and they say it because it's true. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's that kind of God. Even when I wasn't thinking about him, didn't have him on my mind. He was still looking after me. That's reasons to give him thanks. The fact that you still be able to to live, move, and have your very being. That's reason to give him thanks. Now, I didn't say life was easy. But it it sure is a whole lot easier when you got God doing the driving. Amen? So we have reasons to give God some thanks. But why should we be thanking him for the lamb? Well, I told you that Abraham was tested a few weeks ago. He was tested. He was about to kill his son, his only son of promise. He was about to kill him because God had told him to do so. But God was testing him, not tempting him. God wanted to see. If Abraham loved him more than he loved his son. So Abraham took his son up to Mount Moriah and was ready to sacrifice him. And Mount Moriah, as I said a few weeks ago, and some of you weren't here, and if you were here, it's not too bad to hear it again. Mount Moriah was a very important mountain. Because Mount Moriah is one of three mountains that's in the holy city of Jerusalem. And so Mount Moriah is the place where the Lord had him go to sacrifice his son. And while he was about to do it, Sister Spencer, the Lord said, Abraham, don't lay a hand on him. Because I know that you fear God and you have not withheld your son from me. Now... Imagine how Abraham felt that God had told him he don't have to do it. You ever had some things where God told you you didn't have to do it? So Abraham, he came to, he came to the mountain, he built the altar, his son was going to be the sacrifice. The Lord said you don't have to do it. So Sister Dunbar, he said, well, what's next? I don't have to sacrifice my son, but I need to bring a sacrifice. So guess what he did? The Bible says he looked behind him. He lifted up his eyes and looked. I want to tell you that everybody in the room, it's okay to lift up your eyes. You know, when 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 you're walking with your head down, you're missing some things. When, you, when, you, when you're walking with your head down or when you're living with your head down, there are, some, there are some things that you can bump into. But the Bible says Abraham lifted up his eyes and, he, and, and behind him there was a ram caught in the thicket. Now, y'all might not know what a thicket is. 
I asked my wife this morning, uh, as we were kind of reminiscing about our childhood, and, and, I, and I, I said to her, uh, and I'm just curious, I can remember as a kid, Brother David, I used to go pick figs off the fig tree. I hadn't seen a fig tree in years. But I used to enjoy being able to go pick something off the fig tree. And, then, and every now and then I would go find that was a plum tree. And I would be able to go and pick, pick a, 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 a plum off the plum tree. And, 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 and uh, on occasion I would find a pear tree. And I would be able to pick some pears off the pear tree. But there was some fruit. <clears throat> that in order to get the fruit, you, you would have to, uh, uh, you would occasionally get hit with the thorns. Anybody in the room uh, had an occasion where you were trying to get something, but there were some thorns that were in the way. See, we talked about Abraham last time, and we talked about uh, Isaac the last time, but we didn't talk about the lamb. Because the lamb was caught in the thicket. You ever been caught in a thorny place? <laughs> You ever, you ever, you ever been caught? And every time you move, there's a thorn that's sticking you. Shouldn't be that hard to get the fruit without getting stuck with the thorns. But you know, the first time, this is Victor, the first time that thorns were ever mentioned was in Genesis chapter 3. Y'all go there real quick. See, because, you know, listen to this. What God made was good. Everything he made was good. But when man fell, as a result of the fall of man, there were some consequences. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, God is now meeting out the consequences for the fall. It says in verse, uh, he says here, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, that's verse 17, and have eaten of the tree which I command you not, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. It's in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. First time it was mentioned. Listen to this. Roses didn't have thorns on it in the beginning. But after the fall, you want to pick some roses? You're going to encounter some thorns. Oh, because, listen to this. The thorns was on the ram. And I asked, I asked, uh, 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 Sister Cohen, Emerald, because she's studying animal science, I said, what's the difference between a ram and a lamb? Because I wanted to be technically correct because y'all are students of the Bible. And y'all would question me if I was wrong. Well, she said a ram is an adult male lamb. And rams have horns. And so the ram was in the thicket caught by his horns. There was thorns on his head. Are you hearing me? And no matter how he moved, he couldn't break loose of the thorns and the thicket. Listen to this. The thorns and the thicket symbolizes sin. Amen. You ever been stuck by sin? Now, I know we got some holy people in here. And the Bible does say, be holy, for I'm holy. 
But I don't know about you, but in this flesh, I've encountered some thorns. That's why I told you earlier, don't, don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew because the very people who are preaching to you, they still got thorns that they encounter. Now, God is a holy God. He has to judge sin. That's why Abraham was offering a sacrifice because even though he was the father of faith, he struggled with sin. Yes, sir. And as long as you're in this body, you're going to struggle with sin. One, one preacher said that we are sinful by birth. We are sinful by nature, and we are sinful by practice. Amen. You know, uh, my wife and I, we had the pleasure of having our two-year-old grandson with us all month. and had to drive him back to his parents this weekend. But I, I noticed some things in him that I did not see the first time he stayed with us. <laughs> The first time, he was real nice. The first time, he was real quiet. But I noticed he's gotten a little older. And I noticed that there was something in him. I had to ask myself, where did that come from? And, and, and I got to say to myself, the longer he lives, that's thing that's in him that's coming out that don't look so good uh -huh. it's going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. David said this in Psalm 50. He said, I was born in sin. Yeah. I was shaped in iniquity. Yeah. What, what we see, listen here, no matter how good you try to be or how good you think you are, you still wrapped up in a sin yeah. nature yeah. and you live in a fallen, listen Cursed world. And the scripture says, if you say you have not sinned, you are a liar, and the truth is not in you. So go on, look all pious if you want to. See, I, see, I've learned that you can still be in church. With your mind on Jesus. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the evil thought will cross your mind. Yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah, yeah. And listen, you don't have to wait till you get home to sin. You can curse in the parking lot. Boy, 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 boy. Abraham was getting ready to offer sacrifice. His son was no longer the candidate for the sacrifice. But there he was. He found a, a, a ram that was caught in the thicket. And I'm telling you that everybody in the room, you're just like that ram. You've been caught in the thicket of sin. Paul said it this way, when I would do good, evil is always present. Listen to this. You can be by yourself, and evil is always present. Evil is right there. So there was Paul recognizing what we all face, and that is... I struggle. Yeah. I told you that. I asked the question, how many of you in a fight? Oh, yeah. Most of you said, yeah, I've been in a fight. Mm -hmm. I remember the, one of the first parental disagreements my wife and I ever had, Brother Wheeler, is when I found out that my oldest son was in elementary school and his mom told him something, and I told him something different. His mom said one thing, and I said something different. And, 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 and I was a school administrator, and I, and I knew that fighting shouldn't occur. 
But I told my son, if some kid hit you, hit him back. Hit him back. That's what I, uh, and, 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 and even if he had gotten suspended, I would say, good boy. Some of us are no longer fighting back when it comes to sin. We make excuses for it. The Bible says, yield not to temptation. The songwriter said, for yielding is sin. It is. It's no sin to be tempted, but it is a sin to yield. Am I telling the truth? So all of us have been stuck with thorns. But imagine this lamb, this ram who was caught in the thicket, can't get out. And our, our subject was, thank God for the lamb. Because the lamb represented for Abraham a substitute. And I've discovered as I read the Bible, God from the very beginning wanted to introduce man to this idea of a need for a substitute. It's all in the Bible. So let me give you some scriptures. Exodus chapter 12, verse 5 says that man who was going to sin and God was going to accept the sacrifice, that the lamb who was to be sacrificed had to be without blemish. Without blemish. Without a flaw. That disqualifies everybody in the room. Amen. Brother Miles, as much as I like you, you couldn't die for my sins. Because you have some blemishes. Sister Sneed, I love you. You don't have a whole bunch of blemishes. <laughs> but you don't meet God's standards. Do you know when the children of Israel left Egypt? On the night of the Passover, the death angel. Do you know that even in that, what God gave Moses to do. Told all of them that you need to get a lamb. And the blood of the lamb. You would sprinkle it on the doorpost. The doorpost and on each side. Now, if you looked at the doorpost and each side, it, 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 it had the shape of a cross. Are you hearing me? And when the children of Israel was leaving Egypt and they found themselves in the wilderness, God gave instructions to the 12 tribes on how they were to be aligned at nighttime or, 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 or to be aligned in each camp. There were three tribes on the east, three on the, on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. Not all tribes were equal in size, but, but uh, when you were in the mountaintop and the enemy saw you, what they saw of the camp was the camp that was, that was shaped in the shape of a cross. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And Bible says, the Bible says that that the lamb that had to be slain, that that uh, that it was blood was involved in the sacrifice. And Exodus 12, 13 says the blood should be a sign for the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plagues shall not be on you. Leviticus 17 verse 11. I know this is all Old Testament and, and some of us don't read the Old Testament. I get that. But Leviticus 17 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. There is something that God sees in the blood. He says, I have given it to you. And, and on the altar it shall be an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. In other words, the soul that sinned shall surely die. So when you were sacrificing a lamb, that innocent lamb who was without fault, who was without blemish, yeah. you would take that lamb and you would place your hand on the lamb and the lamb's throat would be slit and blood would come out. But by placing your hand on the lamb, you were symbolically transferring your sins from you to the lamb. A lamb that had done no wrong. A lamb that didn't have a spot. A lamb that did not have a blemish. When you put your hand on the lamb, thank God for the lamb. But you were transferring your sins to the lamb. Because you were making an atonement not for the lamb's sin, but for your sin. Now the scripture says this. Anybody who dies... On the cross is a cursed man. So guess what? The wood that Abraham was using for the altar, for the fire, that same wood symbolizes a cross. It's something that God knew in the very beginning, Sister Beer. That there were people like you and I who wanted to be with God, but we could not get to God in our current condition. I said our current condition. Do you know why you can't go to heaven like you are? Because God doesn't allow sin in his presence. That's why you got to be changed. Are you looking forward to the change? Are you looking forward to the fact that, that all you're going to be thinking about is Jesus? Now, I said this year that we need to focus on Jesus. But let me go a little further. The scripture says that when Abraham obeyed God, God told him this. And I thank God for this because I don't know about you, but I got to be somewhere in this picture. God told Abraham in verse 17 of chapter 22, he said, because you have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, multiplying I will multiply you, and your descendants shall be as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand on the seashore, your descendants shall possess the gate of the and in your seed. All nations of the earth shall be blessed because of you. Well, listen to this. Well, why should we thank God for the, the lamb? Why should you thank God, friend, for the lamb? Why should Brother Gibson thank God for the lamb? God in his wisdom, before he even made man, he knew that man was going to mess up. He knew that man was going to mess up and it did not catch God by surprise. So God had a remedy in mind so that when the sin occurred, that man could still make his way to God. Yet without sin because of the blood. Because when God sees the blood, he doesn't see the sin because the sin because the blood covers the sin. 
Aren't you glad that when Jesus, when, when God sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees you covered by the blood. Aren't you glad that all the sins you've committed in the past, committing right now and even in the future, when God sees you, he doesn't see the sin. He sees the blood that has covered you. But throughout the entire Old Testament, they were sacrificing bulls and goats and pigeons. But the writer of Hebrews says, uh uh. It's not the blood of the pigeons. It's not the blood of the bulls. It's not the blood of the ghosts that, that, that caused your sins to be atoned for. They were just a representative of someone who was going to come, who was going to be the true Lamb of God that was going to deliver you from, not, not only from the penalty of sin, but the power of sin and eventually the presence of sin. Yeah. Can I say it again? See, he, he's delivering you from the penalty of sin. Right now, he's delivering you from the power of sin. Do you know sin shouldn't, sin shouldn't just be hitting you and you never hit it back? All right. All right. Sin can't just throw a punch. And you just take it like a good soldier. You know, when you're in a battle, you have to fight back. And God did not want any believer in this room to be defenseless and to be a, a, a punching bag for the devil. Amen. He gave you, he gave you the ability to fight back. You know what he did? He put his spirit in you. Yeah. That's right. And when you got the word of God, you can use the word of God to fight back against the devil. Because there's one thing the devil don't like. He don't like hearing what God has to say. Well, I need to keep going. The Bible teaches that there has been in God's mind from the very beginning a need for a substitute. Well... Matthew chapter 27. You got your Bible? Just run over there real quickly. Matthew chapter 27. Talks about Jesus. And here's what I want to convince everybody in the room. I told you America's in trouble. It's not because who's going to be in the White House. Because America was in trouble long before Thursday's debate. Somewhere along the line. I can't tell you when, but somewhere along the line. We have left the authority of God behind. We become just like the children of Israel who did, who did what they wanted to do because whatever they wanted to do was good in their sight. We have decided to, to operate in rebellion against God. Even this, our foreparents, they drug us to church. But you know, if you just sit there, some stuff will rub off. Yeah. 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 So somewhere along the line, they had a fear of God, a reverence for God. But now we have a generation that thumbs their noses up at God. Yes, yeah. sir. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All you got to do is get on social media and it looked like every woman on social media want to show everybody their butt. <laughs> As if the best thing you have is your body. Where did that mindset come from? The devil. The devil. And the devil has convinced some of us there is no devil. Yeah. And he's convinced some people that the Bible that they used to have a reverence for isn't really the word of God. That's right. 
And they say that the Bible is uh, written by man. Listen, ignorance is no excuse. Amen. You believe that because you don't know the word, somehow you're going to be excused from being accountable for the word. I'll never forget one time I was driving Sister Sweat through Oklahoma. And I drove through this small town. And a cop stopped me. And because I was in Oklahoma, I couldn't use my Texas connection. And he said, sir, you were speeding. And, and I said, well, but the, the sign in the town said 35, which is the sign I saw. But there was another sign I didn't see that got close to the town that said 30. And I said, well, I didn't see the sign. I want him to let me off the hook. Because I didn't see the sign. There are some people in this room. You believe that you're going to be right with God because you did not see the sign. And I'm here to tell you the reason why you didn't see the sign because you're looking down, not looking up. The reason why you didn't see the sign is because rather than reading the word of God, you're reading what somebody else says. You want to know why our communities have become decimated? And I know we don't like to talk about it, but sin is sin. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Mm. That thing, sin, it's a killer. You know what sin does? It fascinates then it assassinates. It thrills, then it kills. It, 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 it causes you to stay longer than you want to stay. Cost you more than you want to pay. Sin. So you want to know why our churches are so messed up today? It's because we say because Everybody can sin. Nobody should talk about sin. And the problem is when you don't talk about sin, everybody think it's okay. That's right. That's right. Lying is not okay. Stealing is not okay. Fornication and adultery is not okay. Can I keep going on? Getting drunk is not okay. Beating up your wife is not okay. Oh, now, y'all got real quiet now. It's not okay to do wrong. Boy, y'all taking me way back. I remember this song that kind of gave people the license through music. Sam, through music, because minister of worship so he u- he uses what he knows how to get people to sin so i can remember as this song i was dancing to the song <laughs> it's your thing do what you want to do i can't tell you who to sock it to wrong i can't but god can Y'all ever heard that song? Yes. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. If being right means being without you, I'd rather be wrong than right. Wrong? <laughs> so we celebrate sin. And in the church house, we don't talk about it. Listen, 
Because God is a holy God. He has to judge sin. And the only way for a sinner to be forgiven is by the Lamb. And either you're going to stand before God by yourself with all your sins or you're going to have the lamb stand in, in front of you as a substitute. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Now the choice is yours. Yes. Now I know that may not be sound theology for some but I'm just trying to tell you. The scripture says in the book of Revelation worthy is the lamb. I don't know about you, but I I thank God for the lamb. I thank God that there was Jesus who was willing to die. Because the scripture says in Matthew chapter 27, which is where I was going, that they stripped him and put a scarlet robe. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, you know that thicket, the thorns, Jesus had the thorns of sin on his head. Everybody's sins was on him. Everybody's sins. If I counted up the sins that's in this room, I can guarantee you it's in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And I'm not even halfway through the church. I haven't even got to the back door. Sin. Is a choice. But it cost. The Jesus said. No man take my life. But I lay it down. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. Listen to that again. I, I want it to resonate in your spirit. God made him who knew no sin. To become sin for us. Do you know he had so many sins on him. He looked like sin. Well y'all don't, y'all won't identify with that. I've eaten so many donuts in my life. That I look like. A donut. The reason why I'm wearing this loose form fitting shirt. Is because. The. The donut. Has gotten bigger. When I go to the donut shop. I say give me a large cinnamon roll. And I've been eating so many cinnamon rolls. I've become like a cinnamon roll. (laughs) Jesus had so many sins on him. Because of our sins. He became sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, Jesus took what we had. And put it on him. And he took what he had. And put it on us. I'm going to go there one more time Kenneth. Because somebody didn't get it. He took what we had. And put it on him. Which is sin. But he took what he had. Which is righteousness. And put it on us. That's. Good news. 
That's why you ought to be able to tell somebody who don't know Jesus, Jesus died for my sins. That I might be just like him. The Bible said this way. When we see him, we shall be like him. And listen, I got even better. I got to stop now, but I got even better news. I was reading in the book of Revelation that in heaven, there were so many angels who were praising God. It says thousands times thousands, ten thousands times ten thousand. But it wasn't just the angels who were praising him. There was also a number that John said that no man could number. In other words, it said, there are so many people, according to the promise that God made Abraham because he was willing to obey God. He said, Abraham, you're going to have so many descendants. It's going to be like the stars in heaven that can't be numbered. And he even put it this way. You got so many people who are going to be just like you that it's just like the sand on the beach. You can't even begin to number them. Listen to this. There are going to be some people who are sitting right beside you who are working beside you at the job. They're not going to be with you because they haven't received Christ as their Savior. There are going to be some people who are in the church but not of the church. Can I suggest this? Church membership is not enough. I wish they had told me that when I was younger. Church membership is not enough. In other words, just because you are a member of the church does not mean, I'm talking about the physical church, the institutional church. Just because you're a member of the institutional church does not mean that you've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Because there are a whole lot of people who have joined church and never been converted. There are a lot of people who have joined church who have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And that's why there are going to be some people I watched one of them on TV this morning. He's a false prophet extraordinaire. There are going to be a whole lot of people say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do all of this in your name? And you know what the Lord's response is? I never knew you. I want to make sure that everybody in this room, because time is winding up. Yeah. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, Brother McCoy, I want Jesus to come back today. If he came back today, I would be happy. Because you know what? I live in a cursed world. I live in people who are, I live in a world with people who don't want to follow Jesus. The same people who put the thorns on his head put the scarlet robe on him, the same people bowed down and mocked him. But the same people who mocked Jesus one day is going to have to stand before him. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So if you want to play around with Jesus, go ahead and play around. If you want to mock him, go ahead and mock him. If you don't want to read his word, follow his will, do what he says, do, go ahead and do it. But it's going to cost you. As a matter of fact, Paul said it is by the foolishness, foolishness of preaching. The foolishness of preaching. Eric, the fullness of preaching that men are going to get saved. Right. It is by the fullness of preaching that men are going to get saved. How is that? Because we preach that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. 
for three days and he got up with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And you may say, that doesn't make sense to me. You mean you tell me all I got to do is believe that God raised somebody from the dead? And what the Bible said, not just somebody, but Jesus. And if he raised Jesus from the dead, everybody that got what Jesus got, he's going to raise them from the dead one day too. Yes. 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 And there's this. I see a picture. I don't see it on earth, but I see it in heaven. I see a picture of a heavenly choir where everybody's in the choir and black and white, Asian and brown, all singing together. I see that when I want to go to church in heaven, I don't have to ask God, where is the black church? <laughs> I see, I see in heaven, I don't have to ask, where is the white church? I see a heaven where skin color don't make a difference. Because it's not by the color of your skin, but it's by the precious blood of Jesus. I see, I see a heaven where there are no clocks. And you don't have to ask what time is the kickoff. <laughs> because you're going to be in heaven all day. Amen. Praising him all day. Amen. So if you don't like church down here, you won't like church up there. Because all they're going to do in heaven is praise the Lord. Amen. And if you're looking for the club in heaven... Well, you can let your hair down. I want to tell you, it's not going to be there. <laughs> Little Wayne, not little anymore. <laughs> Everybody got to grow up. Listen. In Russia, in the Red Square, there is a, a body of a man called Valdemar Lenin. You ever heard of him? And he's, his body is encased. And you can go and see the body. He died in the early 1920s. And the Soviet Union, Russia now, they preserved his body and put it in a casket. And they have soldiers who are around guarding the casket. Night and day. And they have an inscription so that when people go visit his body, the inscription says, Valdemar Lenin was a great leader for all the people. A great leader for all of humanity. And it says here, Jennifer, on, on the inscription, he is the savior of the world. Now he's dead. And they say he's the savior of the world. But can I tell you, if you want to go to see where Jesus' body lies, you can go there, but he's not there. Because the Savior of the world is not dead. He is still alive today with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. And if you want to see him one day, you can see him and he's still in charge. Will you stand? Now there's still some meat on that bone. 
And the, the choir just sang a song, I Can't Tell It All. Yes. Well, I can't tell it all today. Amen. And you can't tell it all today, but you ought to be able to tell somebody yes. about Jesus. Yes. Is there somebody that you know? But if they died today, you wouldn't be sure where they'd spend eternity. Oh, yes. Maybe that's you. Maybe you, the, maybe you haven't truly committed your life to Jesus. And I'm going to, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. That we'll have some men and women like Paul. As, as the Sunday school lesson, we're going to tell the king what we know. Jesus. Will y'all bow with us? And if you're here today and you want to become a disciple of Christ, a member of the body of Christ, or you want to be a member of this fellowship, if you're here today, you can come. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior and you have some questions before you commit to making this life-changing decision, you can come see me. I'll, I'll stay here until I answer all your questions. But I believe that it's time out for playing church. It's time to get right with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we are thankful that the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world was not that ram that Abraham saw in the thicket but the true ram of God the true lamb of God was Jesus your only begotten son who does take away the sins of the world and through his blood we have been forgiven I pray Father God that if there is anybody in this room who have not surrendered their life to Jesus, that they'll do so today. And if they have questions about what is it all about, I pray, Father God, that they'll come seeking, wanting to know what we believe. And I pray, Father God, that every believer will be able to share with them what they know about Jesus. So, Lord God, may the choir that sang today, may they leave this church still singing this week. The deacons who prayed today, Father God, for the church in the back. May they leave here today, Father God, still praying for the church. And I pray, Father God, that the members who came today to worship you this week in a country that has gone astray. This week, Father, in a country that is divided by, by, the, by the, the elephant... And the donkey. Amen. My prayer, Father God, that they look to neither one, but that they look to Jesus. I pray, Father God, that all that we do and say will be pleasing in your sight. May we be ready when Jesus comes. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Now, we're going to stay around. We're going to stay around after church. I'm going to stay right here. So if you're here and you got some questions, come see me. Now repeat after me. Now unto him, now unto him who, is able who is able to keep me from falling, keep me from falling. And, to me and to present me without fault, without, fault. without, sin. without sin, before his throne, before his throne. To, the to the only wise God, be power, be power. glory, glory. Majesty. majesty, and dominion. And and everybody who loves the Lord, say amen. 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 amen, amen. You are excused. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.